right, this evening, I'm just going to be sharing from God's word uh, very briefly, all right? And then Apostle Selman is going to be here actually this evening as well. So it's going to be a very, very, you know, powerful time in the word of God. The book of Mark chapter number four, we're going to read from verse one to verse eight. And I want to talk to us this evening about how to profit from the prophetic, how to profit from the word of God, how to profit from the prophetic word that is released over you and spoken over you and spoken over your life. All right. Uh, and I'm going to read from the book of Mark chapter four, and we're going to read from verse one to verse eight very, very quickly. It's a very popular verse of scripture. Everybody knows about it, but just in case you're not familiar, just in case you became a Christian recently, uh, this is a scripture that, you know, you want to know. For all those that are joining us, whether in the overflow, I see a lot of people outside. I see a lot of people in the overflow. We welcome you and we recognize that you are there. Glory to God. Can we just put our hands together for everybody in the overflow this evening? Hallelujah. We celebrate you and celebrate God for your life. Praise God. All right. Mark chapter 4. The Bible says, And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered to him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat on the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. Verse 2. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them this doctrine. Behold, a sower went out to sow. Next verse. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and some fowls, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Please pay attention to that. Next verse. And some fell on stony ground where it had no much earth, and immediately it sprang up. But because it had no depth of earth, what happened? But uh, uh, when the sun... All right? But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no roots, it withered away. Next verse. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. So some fell on stony ground, some fell among thorns. This is a very popular verse of scripture, we all know it. And others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. So here we see in the word of God that something very interesting happened. A particular sower went out to sow, and the Bible says that different experiences came out of the sower and the the, the sowing experience, all right? The Bible says some fell among stones, right? Some fell by the wayside and all those types of things. The first thing is this. The word of God uh, is the seed, right? And the word of God is a primary ingredient of change in the life of every believer. The word of God is the primary ingredient for change. What that means is that soil without the word, without the seed, cannot produce anything. Or rather, it cannot produce anything good. What it will produce is weed, right? But because when you have a seed, if you take the seed and put it on the shelf, right, the seed is not going to germinate. The potential of the seed only comes out when there is an integration, when there is a merger, when there is a connection uh, between the seed and the soil. Oil. by themselves they can do nothing but by they need each other to be able to produce and add value to you if you're here can you say amen, amen. all right so what that means is this child of god that if you are looking for uh, prosperity if you are looking for anything by god's way you need two things number one you need the word of god that promises you that thing number two you need the soil the heart of man that is willing to receive the promise so that his experience can be what the word of god has said are you with me because the bible says the soil is the heart of man are we still together all right now here's the thing so both are needed, right? Now, many of us have prayed. We spent the most of December praying. We've spent the most of January fasting and praying. In our church, we are still on 21 days fasting and it's ending by uh, 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 Sunday, right? So what that means is that there is a lot of prayer that has gone into the atmosphere. For many people and in many people's lives, they have spent the bulk of December and January. If I calculate all the hours you have spent praying in December and January alone, some of you will have built house. Why? Because there has been a lot of prayer. Now, here's the thing that gets me. Why do Christians pray so much but have so little results? Because many of you have not just prayed. Many of you have words that have been spoken over your life. Many of you have prophecies. How many of you have prophecies hanging over your life? Glory to God. So, many of us have words. Many of us have prophecies, right? This is what pains me the most. Listen, I am very passionate about this. Which is the fact that when Christians are prayed for, when Christians are spoken to, and they still do not produce results, I am angry. It pains me. 
And that's one of the things that drives me to search in God's word. That God, if there is an answer here, please show me. Otherwise, if this thing is fake, let's know what we are doing. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I don't know about you, but I don't like deceiving myself. If this thing does not work, there's no point trying to front for God. God is not helpless. Come on now. God does not need, God is not looking for Voltron, the defender of God. He can defend himself. So God, you don't need us to be hyping you. We are not your hype men. You are God. You can do these things. But what is the problem? Why don't people have the experience that they are praying for? How do I know people are, don't have the experience they are praying for? Because they are still praying. Because when you receive what you are praying for, what will you do? Move to the next level. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? So, the prayers continue and the thing keeps working, moving. So, here's what the Bible says. If you want 30-fold, if you want 60-fold, if you want 100-fold, you need the word, you need the soil. But many people have the word and the soil, but yet something is still missing. What's missing? That's what I want to talk about today. And Pastor Paul, I just started talking about it yesterday. So, how does this work? There are four different categories. Because 30, 60, and 100 fold. Listen, eh? I know that some people want 100 fold. Some people are saying, I don't even mind 30. I don't even mind one. Let, it, let there just be a fold. Any fold is a fold. I, do you understand what I'm saying? He said, when you are talking 30 fold, you, you are even advanced. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some people just want a fold. Just fold. Praise God. Now, so, here's the thing. Everyone desires 30, 60, or 100 fold in whatever shape or category in their lives. Now, let's call that profit, right? Because when, it, when 30 fold happens, you have achieved profit. What is the definition of profit in this context? You sow a seed and the seed germinates and gives you a harvest. Are, you, are we still together? Please follow me carefully tonight. Glory to God. Now, the Bible now says, right, there are four categories. The first one is those that fall by the wayside. What does that mean? That means that every word that you read in the Bible, every prophetic utterance but makes no meaning to you. Any prophecy that is declared but makes no meaning to you has fallen by the wayside. Any prayer that is prayed but makes no impact on your heart has fallen by the wayside. It doesn't mean you are a bad person. It just means you can't receive all the prayer. I don't know if you understand. Why? Because some prayers are not even, you don't need it. They say, receive a child now. You know that you have too much. In fact, if you want, they can give you out of their own children. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Why? Some prayers will always fall by the wayside. Some prophecies will fall by the wayside. And the reason why is because they make no impact in you. Are you following me this morning, this evening? All right. So that's the first category. Some that fall by the wayside. Now, it doesn't mean that those prayers cannot work for you. It means that if you, by the time, if it works, it's fluke. It's the grace of God. You didn't work it. I don't know if you understand. You did not work out your salvation. The grace of God worked irrespective of your lack of faith. Because you didn't have faith in the word. But it worked all the same. That's the grace of God. But what I want to show you is how you can take that word and make it germinate and produce the result that you want in this 2022. Are you following me? Are you still with me? Because Isaac sowed in that land. And in that same year. This is your year. All right. Number two. Mark chapter 4 verse 5. New Living Translation. This is what many people don't see. The Bible says that some fell on stony ground. What does that mean? To fall on stony ground means that. And some fell on stony ground. Where he had much. Other seed fell on shallow soil. This is what I mean by stolen ground. With underlying rock. Now, the sweet spiral quickly because the soil was shallow. Here's what it means. You have soil. But the soil is not deep enough to contain the potential of the seed. Why? Any seed that grows out immediately will soon die. It must grow in first. So the Bible says that there is a category of people when they receive the word... The word does not enter. Why? Because they've not soaked it. Come on now. So, stony ground means that there is soil, but there is no depth. That's why when you see some Christians that are overly excited, but they have not received anything, you wonder for their excitement. You say, boy, you were excited about this word in church. Why does it have manifestation in your life? Because sometimes you, mo you can be excited, but you need to learn how to calm down. I want to show you that today. The reason it did not go deep was not because the seed lacked the capacity to go deep, but the soil lacked depth. In other words, the promise of God is not weak. The heart of men is shallow. 
God is not slack concerning his promises. Second Peter. As some people count slackness. Are, are we still together? So the word of God is full of power. But the heart of men many times is not deep enough to receive it. That's what the Bible is saying. So, so therefore, what are rocks? What are rocks? In John chapter 11 verse 39, Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus. What did he say? He said, you take away the what? Stone. Roll away the stone. What are rocks? The underlying rocks here refers to characters, behaviors that you have that is blocking your miracle from manifesting. Can I talk to you this evening? Because some of you, God is about to touch you now. Now, 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 now. All right. When he says that they do not have much earth, he's referring to internal circumstances. Because there are two factors that affect your miracle. Internal and external. Internal are the ones that because of the underlying rocks, it does not allow it to go in. What are underlying rocks? Mindsets that are not working. Petty behavior. Malice. God wants to bless you, but he said, reconcile with your sister. He said, no, no. You have blocked that root. Because God knows that he cannot bless you in a particular way. So, he has, so you have to keep praying because he needs to keep looking for your blessing. Because the channel he wanted to use, you have blocked it. How did you block it? Your character that God said you should change, that you refuse to change. Petty behavior. Unforgiveness. Petty behavior. Those are behaviors that hinder the work of God from moving. You take things too personally. You can't work in an office. Because somebody didn't greet you in the morning, you scattered the whole office. You can't, they can't promote you. You have shown that you lack emotional stability. Rocks, underlying rocks are mindsets, behaviors that are hindering God's word from finding root in your heart. Why? Anytime he tries to find root, you uproot it by your rock. That's why God said to them, remove the stone first if Lazarus will come out. Why? Removing the stone are mindsets that is preventing Lazarus from coming out. Otherwise, we can be praying for Lazarus. If the stone is not removed, he will keep knocking. He can't come out. Some fell on stony ground, meaning that the heart of man is not deep enough. Why? It's clustered by petty things. Silly behavior. They cut, entered in front of you in traffic. You must jam them back. Now, two of you have had an accident. You can't go to office again. They have now sacked you. You say they are doing you. They are not doing you. You are doing you. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Your mindset is disturbing God from moving forward with your life. God said, change the way you talk. You say, this is the way I am. This is the way I am. I say what I mind. I, I speak my mind. That's why you are mindless. Forgive me. Why? You have said everything. So all the mind have go. Rocks, 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 rocks that are preventing the miraculous from taking root in your mind. That's the first thing. Glory to God. The second, the other rocks are refusing to leave your comfort zone is a rock. Why don't you go and talk to so-so person for a job? I'll go tomorrow. I'll go tomorrow. What's going on? Okay, why can't you come? Ah, there's traffic. And there's, there's no Okada again, Abi. You are not desperate. You like complaining. Some people refuse to change because they love the sympathy they get from staying in their comfort zone. You'll get it when you get home. You, don't worry. That one, that, this one I just said. When you get home, the Spirit of God will give you wisdom. Some people, the reason why they have not prospered is not because anybody's doing them. It's because they refuse to leave their comfort zone. Why? See, <laughs> I wish I had time. Number three. Then the Bible now said that some fell among what? Thorns. Now, what are thorns? I'm just going to say a few, a little one about this, and then we'll move on. Thorns are external factors, probably that you were not affecting, but they are affecting your ability to produce. I'll give you an example. When, when you find people, especially Christians, they go to church. Pastor said, go and prosper. You say, amen. Pastor said, what else? Give me a middle, give me a blessing. This is your season. You say, Yes, ease and plenty. I receive it. I'll show you that you have received nothing. It's my portion. Then you believe that ah, from now, 
everything, the lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. So here's what many people are expecting in their mind. That when they get to work the next day, the customers they've been praying for for the last two months, they will now start showing them on Monday. Then on Monday, no sale. Tuesday, no sale. In fact, it's now worse because after two months now, after you have prayed, you now start wondering, God, are you really... I don't know, <laughs> but I received. I, I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Listen, when the Bible says that the seed fell among tongues, what it's referring to, because it says that things, other things grow, and what did they do? Choke the word. What that means is your environment is choking you. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Mike Tyson, I love Mike Tyson, fantastic boxer. Mike Tyson said one day, something one day, he said, everybody has a strategy until you get punched in the face. In other words, when you come out that, ah, life, I've come to attack life. Ah, life, once life give you, boom. <sighs> once you fall down, you say, Jesus, I'm coming home. You know what that means? Too many people give up too soon. The Bible says, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. What you are supposed to do is go back into the room where you received the promise and say, God, they give out the promise. Give the way. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Listen to me. Life is not the way you think. Life is the way it is. So when you go out there and life challenges you, you are not supposed to shrink. You are supposed to fight back. But the problem is this. Many of us have wrong expectations. That's why today, when you pray for the average person, more, I see money coming your way. What do they see? Ghana must go. Dollars. Dollars. Pounds. You know, I was hearing, I heard the story of a man of God. They, they said that there was a rich man in their church. The rich man said, after you're preaching, please come to my house. The man said, no, I don't go to rich man's house. They advised him. They said, go. He said, when he got there, the man took him to a room. He said, see, here, on this bed, pounds. On this bed, dollars. On this bed, euros. He said, was looking like this. The man now did like this. Picked the money. One bundle, pounds, and gave him. He said, he didn't even have the courage to count it. You know, because when they give you a gift, you can't count it. Oh, wait, are you trying to find out if it's complete? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Is it not a gift? Abby? Just imagine you go to your friend's house, you saw their child. Oh, good boy, good boy. You take, you put your hand there and give him something. The guy stand there and say, Baba, wait, wait. <laughs> it was when the man of God got home that he counted 20,000 pounds. Just like this. He said, Why didn't the man do like this? Please don't let me digress. You people are distracting me. So, you are on. So, the, the falling among thorns means you underestimate what it takes to succeed. Everyone has a strategy for success. But when the year starts, that's when we know who really has a strategy. We don't know whether you have received anything now. Now It's March, we will know. April, May. That's when we will know whether you received something at Wine Press. All this one you are doing, anybody can be doing it. You think it's by, I received it! I'm not saying you should not receive, receive it. But by June, still receive it. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Job said, don't he slay me. He said, yet will I trust him. He says, I will tarry here until my change come. I don't know if, are, are we still together? Are you understanding me? So, why don't people experience their testimony? Number one, they have behaviors internally that God is trying to change, but they are refusing to change. Number two, they have things happening externally that they don't have the internal wherewithal and the emotional strength to overcome yet. Now, the one we all want is the one that falls on what? Good ground. Where is the Lord? Falling on good ground means that you have dealt with issues internally. Number two, you have developed the emotional and uh, emotional strength to overcome any challenge that may come to that may be thrown at you on the outside. All right. Now you are now ready for the word. First Timothy chapter four verse fourteen. Let me show you now. Because I've given you background. We want to fly now. The Bible says, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given to thee by what? Prophecy. The same way prophecies are going to be given to you tonight. The same way prophecies have been given to you before now. The same way prophecies will be given to you after today. 
It says, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which is given to you by prophecy, with the laying on of hands of the what? Presbytery. Some of you, hands were laid on you when you came outside and they prayed for you. Am I, are we still together? Some of you, they just spoke a word. The, it does not matter. The point is you receive something supernatural. Are you still with me? Next verse. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself how? Holy to them that your what? Anything you claim to have received in this conference and you have not meditated through cannot bring you profit. Are you listening to me? Why? We all forget. God, it, you see, it doesn't... Forgetfulness is not predicated on how powerful the word is. It's predicated on your ability to internalize what it is that you have received. Are you still with me? Now, what does it mean to meditate? That's what I want to talk to you about this evening. Because I'm hoping and I'm praying that God will open your eyes so that you see what I'm saying. Please, can you bring my, can you please ask Shino to bring my stuff? To bring, you know, the cup and all of that. All right? Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Now, to get the results of the good ground, the Bible has shown us that for your prophecy to appear, that you meditate upon these things and give yourself wholly, not partially to them, that you're profiting by a pair. Because if you don't do that, your profiting will not what? Appear. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. The Bible says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left of us entering into the rest. God gave them a promise of entering into his rest. The same way God is giving many people promises in this place. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. God is speaking words into your heart. Are you following me? Any, lest any of you should seem to come short of it. How will you come short of a word that has been given to you? How is it that the word of God that has been spoken to you will not find expression or manifestation? I want to show you how. Next verse. For unto us was the gospel preached. In other words, the same way we received. That's the same way other people received. Please, please, please follow me but the word that was preached did not profit a category of people. Why? Huh? Glory to Jesus. Please, I might need some help. I, I'll need some help. So I want to please stand here. I want to show you something. Hey. The Bible did not say that they did not have faith. They had the word. They had the faith. But they did not mix it. How do you mix? Let me show you. I have here Milo. Milo, Milo. Pa, 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 pa. Come on now. Hallelujah. Please help me hold this. Oh, glory to God. I want to show you what it means to, to mix. Now, here is a cup of water. And this is a sachet of Milo. You are not paying for this advert, though. Glory to God. Can you help me? Cut it. You just use your teeth or something. Come on now. Please hold. Okay, now hold this. Now, please follow me. If I pour Milo here. Sorry. This is faith. This is the word. They received it. Jonathan. Now, I've allowed it to settle a bit. But normally, if I pour it inside, you still see the milo on top or the milo under. What that means is that because the milo has not entered, if I wanted to pour it away, I can quickly shake away the milo, milo and still have my water. But once I mix it, I can no longer separate the word I have received from the faith. I can no longer separate it. When you put hot water in a pot, the water is hot. When you put the eba, yeah, but it's still all right. But when you mix it, you cannot separate the word from the Eba again. God says, if you want a miracle, take the word that you have received and mix it with your faith. How do you mix it? By meditation. One of the meanings of the word meditate is to mix it in your heart over and over again. You keep turning it. You keep turning it. You keep turning it. Let me show you. Thank you. Can I please just give me a chair? Give me a chair, please. A chair. A chair. A chair. 
Thank you. Thank you. The Bible says the word did not profit them. Why? It did not what? Mix with faith. So here's what you're supposed to do. When you come into a meeting like this, like wine press, when you are reading your Bible, and as you are reading, the word of God is making sense to you. There's something in the word that jumps out of you. What has happened is that it have, you have moved from Logos to Rema. Rema has come out. Why? Every word you receive, some will always fall by the wayside. Anyone that remains with you is the one that is trying to enter your heart. Meaning that, listen, some, I, will, I can prophesy, but not all the prophecies will resonate with you. The one that resonates with you, take it. When you take it and write it down, that's why I'm sorry for those that don't write in church. I don't know what you're doing. When you write it down, your job is to go back home and sit down. Open the Bible. Begin to mix. Begin to mix. How do you begin to mix? This is what Bishop T.D. Jake said. They said, Bishop, how do you preach powerful messages? He said, I just opened the Bible and I begin to stare at it. He said, I just begin to look at it. As I look at it, Bible says that as we behold the word of God as in a glass, we are changed. Kabada Mashata. We are changed into the same image. So you continue to look until you become what the word of God says. How does that happen? Hey, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. I want to show you how it happens. I want to show you how it happens. Second Peter. We have also a martial word of prophecy. Well, unto you do well that you take heed. Take heed. As unto what? A light that what? This is why when the word of God comes to you and it seems to make sense more than the others, a light has shone in a light dark place. Hey, God, help me this evening. When the word of God shines in a dark place, what are you supposed to do? And until the day, and the day start what? So you sit down there. Why? You are waiting for the day to dawn. This is why I said you have heard, you have not yet learned. Ah, cabroto sata. You sit down with the word and you begin to think. Let me tell you what will happen. As you begin to meditate, your specific situation, the word, the action to take will come out. When that happens, the day star has arisen in your heart. That is why nobody could have touched the woman with the issue of blood that by touching the helm of the Jesus' garment, you will be healed. That's, this is where Christianity is personal. That's why you copy my action but don't get my result. I don't know if you understand. Why? My action was based on my mixing. You have not mixed your own and you want to take my own. It cannot work. You have put a round peg in a square hole. It's not going to work. But as I meditate on it, I'm crafting my own round peg for my round hole. You know why? The word of God has many dimensions. Glory to God. I was listening to a pastor preach. He said that his wife was about to get married. She was already engaged to someone to marry another man. All of a sudden, one day she was reading the Bible. And she saw where the Bible says that the man that you are with now is not is no your husband. Listen, normally you will read that scripture and move past it like waiting day here. She said when she read it, the thing refused to let her go. Some, a light has shone in a dark place. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. He said, ah, why is this thing disturbing me? Any word that is disturbing you, God is about to do something. Though. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying this evening. If you receive a word in this conference and you get out and that word refuses to leave your heart, God is speaking to you. Are you listening to me? Why? Satan does not operate that way. That is God speaking to you. What you should do. So she said, she just kept on reading. That God, the same way you told me that this man is not my husband through the Bible. Show me my husband through the Bible. She said one day she was just reading. That God said Samuel should go anoint the sons of Jesse. And as she was reading, she, know, she saw that, that um, um, they said, oh, where is the last born? They said, he's not around. Go and call him. Right? She said that something in her heart just told her that that's the scripture. By the time the guy she, was, she married came, he was the last born of his family. The, the, exactly the picture of David. That was his picture. Now, if you go and try it, you will marry wrong. That is the problem many Christians have. You are copying an action that you don't know how it came. Ah, yeah, If you want to copy the action, copy where it came from. Copy what produced the word so that you can get the answer for your own situation. So two people can receive the same word and out of the same word come two different experiences. Glory to God. 
if you are a pastor in this place and you are trusting God for a ministry, what word did God give you to go and start a church? Open it. Sit down. And say, God, until the day dawns, and the day starts, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Many of you are looking for too much counseling. That's your problem. You are looking for counseling on the outside for what God is doing on the inside. I don't, under, I don't understand. Even Eli had to tell Samuel, when he speaks, just say, God, speak. Because I can't tell you what he's about to say. The Bible says, the wind bloweth where it listed. No man knows where it is coming from or where it's going to. He says, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nobody can predict your future, sir. You are a child of the living God. Nobody knows what. They, don't, they lack the capacity. I don't know if you're not. They lack the capacity to predict your future. That's why when they call you, they say they're calling your name in the dream. You, a child of the living God. Bible says your life is hid with Christ in God. Before you get to me, you get to God. Are you, do you understand what I'm talking about? We move by revelation. We move by revelation. So, ah, he's relocating to Canada. Go and sit down. If you want to relocate, it's not hard. Listen, God will give you the desires of your heart. It's not hard. But before you go, receive a word. You know why? When the going gets tough, where do you go back to? You spoke to me at the backside of the desert where there was nobody. And that is why I've come back to give you praise. Uh, Lord, that which I know not, open my eyes. Uh, the Bible says, then open he their understanding. <laughs> says, that which I know not, show thou me. They will think you are calling Nifa. Because when you go back, that's what happened to Daniel. Daniel said, "You Lord, God, you brought us into this place with Nebuchadnezzar. Somebody now wants to mess us up. Ordinary dream. Ordinary dream. He said, give me three days. That's the way you should be. When they want to sack you in your office, you say, give me two days. You go back to the scripture that God gave you to enter that office. Ha. It says, anywhere the sole of your feet shall tread upon, you shall possess. Hey, take photo. Go and do photocopy. Why? What gives you confidence is not the arm of flesh. It's the word that you have received from your inside. That's why there can be storms on the outside. As long as there is peace on the inside, you are okay. Jesus was sleeping on the boats that there was storm inside. He became the first example of someone sleep, sleeping, sleeping on a pillow bed, on a wet water bed. Hallelujah. He invented things. That's why the Bible says, when others say there is a casting down, we have received the technology for lifting. That's why God said, don't compare yourself one with another. Because what I'm doing in you is different from what I'm doing in another person. Even though two of you are attending the same church and listening to the same word. I don't know if you are listening to me this evening. So, how do you do it? Proverbs chapter 18 verse 1. Pastor Foloke knows me and this scripture. We are, we are intertwined. This scripture is one of my favorite scriptures. Proverbs 18 verse 1. The Bible says what? Through desire. How do you get it? What? Through desire. A man having what? Some of you are too much with the crowd. You are, too, you are hanging out too much. You need to be hanging in. You are hanging out too much. There's too much out, out, everything out, out. I'm going out. I'm hanging out. Hey, Baba, calm down. Hang in. You are running around too much. Sit down with the principal. He said, God, you open, you, you were the one that created this thing. You started this thing. Did I, am I the one that wanted to promise myself? No, I want to ask you. Am I the one that promised myself victory? You make, you get the, the promise now. Don't be me start this thing. Now you start um, I, Do you understand what I'm saying? You run a business, there's no sales. How can you how can you be running a business? There's no sales for two months, and all you are doing is consulting. You say, I'm looking for a consultant. When the biggest consultant of all lives inside you, you go to him in the place of prayer as you are profess, as you are praying in church. The man of God says, This is it. Listen to me. And I'm saying this to you, harvesters people, listen to me. Genesis chapter 26, verse 26, verse 22. The Lord has made room for us. You will go back home. You will put it down and sit down. Because this one that you wake up in the morning, the first thing is Instagram. You are doing yourself. Oh. You sit down until you see your room from that place. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Why? From that same scripture, some people will see accommodation. From that same scripture, some people will see relocation. From that same scripture, some people will see business success. What do you see? You know why? Because God said to them, he said, as far as your eyes can see, not as far as the people can talk. Because what do you see? That's the question. Who is as blind as my servant? 
They refuse to sit. You see, the problem is this. The walk is sitting down. That is the walk. See, through desire, please, where is it? Through desire, a man having separated himself, he seeks and he what? Intermeddles. What does that mean? He mixes. He mixes. He mixes. Until he gets to a point. Listen, eh? The only way, listen to me. The only way that you have the word you have received will last till June. And I'm saying June 2022 is if you go and mix it. Anybody that doesn't mix it, eh, I guarantee you, March, they've forgotten. Let's bet. I can bet you anything. Anybody that remembers is because they mixed it with their faith. So the Bible did not say they didn't have faith. Because many of you now, this night, the atmosphere, your faith is charged. Over, over faith is worrying you. But you need to calm down and take that faith with the word. And do what? Mix it. That mixing what happens in your heart. He seeketh and intermeddleth with all, all wisdom. So whether it's a marriage issue, but God gave you Genesis 26, 22. That's what God gave you. But you know, he knows you have marriage problems. But he gave you Genesis 26, 22. Out of that place, the room for sorting out your marriage will come out. You will be surprised. All of a sudden, you will just get out one day and you will be walking. Somebody will say something. Bam! That's the answer you are looking for. Why? Faith is a magnet. It attracts everything you are believing God for. Let me tell you something. Eh? For me personally, I'll just be listening to a song. That song will just refuse to leave me. That's how I started singing a song in, December, in November, December. I see the evidence of your goodness. Why did I start singing that song? The first day I heard it, God spoke to me through that song. Many songs like that. I was listening, singing. I was just sitting there one day. That's why it's good to have anointed choir. If they don't have anointed choir in your church, I don't know where you are going. Honestly speaking, I don't know where you are going. The other day they were singing, Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. God said, I'm bringing newness out of you. Ah! When it was after he said it that I now went to look for the scripture where he said it. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So, that, what, so it's not enough to, for me to now say, God said he's bringing newness. So, okay, okay. No. You go and sit down. Luke chapter 5 verse 39. Lord, where is the newness? Is it a new location? Is it a new business? What exactly is the newness? Is it a new relationship? What exactly is the newness? Because you can be specific and accurate in the realm of the spirit. Because when a word is released, it's generic. You now take it and customize it. In the electricity industry, they call it step down. High frequency is going. 33 kVA power lines. Boom, boom, boom. But you need the one that belongs to you. So you put a step down transformer to take it from high frequency into your frequency. Because if it enters you high like that, you can die. So you need the one that is your portion. That's why I said God has made room for us. He has given us our portion. So you go back home and say, Lord, what is my own portion? Glory to God. Can we close? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. But you shall do what? Meditate on it day and night. You shall make your way. And how many people shall have good success? You. But good success only comes because you have taken the generic word that you heard from church and you have stepped it down into your situation. Many of you came out tonight and said, I want God to help me in my business. Listen to me. This is the best advice I can give you. I've prayed for you and I believe God that there will be a miracle. But listen, there is a way that even if there is no miraculous happening, you can generate a miracle by your faith. Listen, the atmosphere is charged. When we pray, things will happen. But there are some people that even though it happens, they want more. <laughs> so they need to customize it to suit their requirements. You go back and sit down. You say, Lord, open this thing to me. Daniel calls him the revealer of secrets. The secret in this industry, open it to me. God opened us, opened our eyes. We saw NLP. If God can open for NLP, why can't he open for your business? I mean, is he crippled when it comes to your business? He said, I'm the God of how many flesh? Oh. Is there anything? To, including your business. Including your marriage. Including your relationship. Nothing is hard. See, many of you, see, I hope you are aware. For many of us, I hope you are aware that your prayer point is a check. Many people, their prayer point is a transfer. See, think about it. If someone transfers 100 million naira to you now, many of you will stop praying. 
Am I preaching to some? You don't have to raise your hand. I know. I know. So, and is a transfer, as in log into your GTB app. How much? 100, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, send. Your account will not reject it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Glory to God. Here's what I want us to do tonight. You're going to lift up your voice and you're going to begin to declare. Every word that has resonated with you since wine press started. If any word has not resonated with you, begin to pray that tonight, as words are being spoken, your seed should enter inside your own heart. Are you listening to me this evening? If you have received a word, I want you to begin to declare those words. Because God is about to open up your eyes to see beyond what has been spoken. I don't know if you are hearing me this evening. Hey! Raka broko toso boko tole bahaya. Elabasha. If you have received the word, go ahead and begin to declare it. If you have not yet received, you say, Lord, tonight open my heart, open my ears, help me to see, help me to hear, help me to perceive, help me to understand. Elabasha katana madabokondeleha. Elabokode bakrada dadabasha. Akato so pregede bo shakata. Makata te 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 deboshe Brakata da 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 di arasa Enamashana makala bakandere rocha Ekebo shakata la bahashka Hey, akabara bashoko tole bahashka Come on, go ahead and pray tonight Enamashana bakala bashata la baha Ekabara bashata in the overflow in the auditorium lift your voice lift your heart go ahead and declare that the word of the lord is coming to me tonight in the name of jesus i will be turned into another man i will be changed by the power of the spirit come on somebody lift your voice and pray Hey, Bakabara Bashaka Talabah. 